like Hilegonda carried earth from the Veluwe to this place, I am honoring her to do exactly the same because she created this earth and she defended it, this against the sea. She is the mother of this earth. So, Hail Hilegonda, in honor of you. Hello, my name is Dirkje. And my name is Martin. And this is the tribe of the fox. And we are now in the middle of Rotterdam, in the north, to be exactly Hilligersberg. And normally, we heathens, we go out in nature. And uh, what are we doing in a city now, eh? in the middle of a city? Uh. Yeah, we are, like Dirkje said, in Rotterdam, which is the largest seaport city in the Western Hemisphere. And uh, we are actually in a very special part of Rotterdam. It is called Hilligersberg. Now, that's a former town. Until 1941, this was an independent town. But what are we doing here? I tell you. Hilligersberg means the mountain of Hillegonda. Now, who is Hillegonda? She is a giantess. And as you regular viewers know, Dirk and me, we really, really love to work with the giants. Okay, Hillegonda. So, what was her story actually? Yes, yeah, she is a giantess, yeah. and uh, there's not a, a lot known about her. We have, we had to search for information, but there's a legend. Two actually. Two legends. Yes, and one is that uh, the giantess came here with earth from the middle of the Netherlands to make this area protected from the sea. And we are actually, you cannot see it on the video, I think, but we are actually in a small, little small hill here with a church. And if you look behind us, let's see. <laughs> let's swing the camera <laughs> a little bit. Uh, yes, there it is. There is the castle an old castle so this actually is a very ancient place yeah because when we strip this of all the mythology then this place is called a donk and the dutch word donk is a hill made in the better said it's a river dune made in the ice age 12,000 years ago however as dirk je told told just told you the giantess hillegonda was carrying Earth exactly from Dirkje's part of the country, the mm -hmm. Veluwe, to here, to here, in her apron, and she lost the scent. Her apron ripped. She lost the scent, and this hill came into being. The other legend is that she already lived here, but she was uh, moving on her own away from her father's house to build a house land inward, and then her apron ripped and the scent fell off the floor. So they are two legends and um, there's more to it but we come to that later and if you look behind us you see a church and there was already a church here around the year 950 so that's a long time ago and that can point to a pagan place because during christianity and they were building churches on old pagan or heathen places. So this really can be a sacred place. And the ruin uh, that we just showed you over there, uh, that was an old castle built by the giant Hillegonda. This is really a lovely place. I mean, we're in the busiest part of the Netherlands, but it's so quiet here. Now, it wasn't always this quiet, because the reason this castle is a ruin is because it was destroyed in a succession war in the, uh, well, in the 1400s, uh, somewhere in this, this time frame. Let's have a look inside. 
it's possible. Now, as you see here, there are graves inside, inside of the ruin, inside of the castle. We didn't expect that. Yeah, you see the old windows and entrances. Quite a look at the mysterious here. place. You see the plants here? Over there, yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is a... Uh, quite small actually a tiny little uh, perhaps it was just the tower yeah maybe the castle was bigger yeah oh, oh I'm now on a gravestone <laughs> and this is the awesome thing about living in Europe there are castles and ruins everywhere yeah it's quite a nice place here you can see the graveyard outside and over there there are already the houses of Rotterdam yeah. and have a view from this side look how thick the walls are they knew what the building was <laughs> to build something very solid Look, there are stairs. They're going down. What's there behind? Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Uh, totally nothing. Well, it sounds not so solid. Not solid. <laughs> no, I can stand on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. And the stairs are going up, I think. But then. Uh, Oh, look at the spiral here. Yep. So this was the staircase, you see? Oh, probably. Maybe this was a tower. This is a spiral. Don't you think? Yeah, it was. It was. Beautiful. Oh, it was lovely. But what is the exact reason that brought us here? Are we just chasing a legend? No. The thing is, as you regular viewers know, we like to work with the Tuarsar, we like to work with the Jotnar, the giants. And what happened is I was making a trance journey to do a ritual in a trance-like state. And it was in the Ironwood. That's basically, I always call it the headquarters of the, of the Tuarsar. That's where Ang Anger Boda lives, that's where Fenris is originally from, and Hela and Jörmungandr. I done my ritual there in a state of trance and when I was finished I remained in a state of trance and what happened I had an extremely clear view of the city of Rotterdam to be precise the Straatweg here in Rotterdam Noord and I had a very spiritual feeling with it a feeling as if there was as if there was something that I had to learn here so after my trance journey I checked the internet and then I learned about the legend of Hillegonda, the giantess. So, Dirkje, can you tune into this place actually? Because I have big difficulties to tune into this place. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we both tried to feel this place, but it's overwhelming because of all the graves yeah and the graves are very close to each other and uh, it's just too full yeah and i feel sadness and but i cannot tune in this place the original place the pagan place i cannot tune in and, and you have the same eh? <laughs> so, yeah so. well the, the graves are just overwhelming they're stacked uh, as many in this place as possible there's a christian church in the center of this donk, this river dune. And um, I do feel Hillegonda. She, she is happy that we are here, but it's almost as, as, as if she cannot communicate with us through all this dead energy that is here. 
it feels like this for me. Yeah, the only thing I feel about Hillegonda is after honoring her that she is caring. She's a caring and a lovely uh, a goddess, giantess. So, yeah, she, she's a nice personality. Yeah, because but, the Tuersar yeah. and the Jotnar always have a bad rep reputation in the Edda poetry. But Dirkjen and me have very good um, uh, experiences with the giants and giantesses. Yeah. Well, let's go. There's still one other place we can go. And we go there. Hold on. Well, there's another part of the myth of the giantess Hillegonda. And you see it behind me. So, water and water. Two lakes. Now, when Hillegonda, she wore an apron with sand in it. And when she lost the scent, it made her cry. One tear from one eye, and one tear from the other eye. And these are the tears, these two lakes. That's a cool story, isn't it? So just a lake with one tear.